Um, I only have a half an hour with Neil Wolf, and I want to make the most of it. Um, thank you for joining me, Catherine with a C, April Waters with two T's, um, peoplesinternetradio.com. I call my show Organic News. No preservatives, additives, and certainly no Monsanto GMO. Uh, just, you know, the, the ground, uh, grassroots truth from clean, as clean as uh, people as you can get it. And um, so Neil Wolf is back, uh, activist, independent researcher uh, down there in the Virginia, D.C. area, who's just going to give us an update on the arrest of uh, Randall Bean and Heather, and the attorney, Heather uh, and Tucci Giraffe. Thank you, Neil Wolf, for uh, coming, uh, returning back. Hey, thanks for having me, Kat. Appreciate it. Um, so again, if you could just kind of give like a bit of a summary as to, uh, you know, what happened with uh, Randall Keith Bean and uh, attorney Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe and why they, why he, why he was arrested and she tried to stand up for him and then she was arrested. And this is going back like two weeks ago, roughly? Um, yeah, she would have been arrested on July. But yeah, more than two weeks, probably pushing three weeks. Um, first of all, I'd like to tell your listeners that if they would like some more backstory on this entire uh financial scheme is what I'll call it, not Randall Beans, I'm talking about the Fed's financial scheme, that uh, they might want to go and take a look at a video interview that Titus Frost and I did on Titus's YouTube channel, and his YouTube channel is Titus, T-I-T-U-S, Frost, F-R-O-S-T, and it's probably five or six videos back, and it's uh, it says Admiralty Law. Both of us uh, input a lot on that video, and it did, does a really good job of giving a layperson an understanding of kind of uh, where we got to where this case is to begin with, because it, it, it's, it's fairly complicated stuff. But now in regards to uh, Randall and Heather Ann, what Randall did, Randall's down in Tennessee, and uh, Randall um, accessed, successfully accessed his uh, what some call Treasury Direct uh, accounts, what I have always referred to as collateral accounts, and I'll explain later why I call them collateral accounts, and um, he did. He accessed his account uh, through a Federal Reserve routing number. And what Randall did was he's apparently a member of USAA, which is a financial institution, a bank. And uh, Randall uh, wire transferred money from an account that uh, was using a Federal Reserve routing number. And it also used his name and his Social Security number was the account number. Um, so... Um, he had this money wired to USAA, and um, I think it was to the tune of a million and a half dollars. Some of the transfers were reversed, but a couple of them went through where he immediately purchased uh, jumbo CDs to the tune of a million and a half, I believe, uh, two CDs. He immediately uh, cashed in those CDs, paid, paid a slight penalty, and uh, then he proceeded to buy a 40-foot, 45-foot, uh, Diesel RV with some of those funds. I believe he wired some money to a friend as well. And um, he was uh, shortly thereafter, and, and Heather Ann was involved in all this because the uh, USAA contacted the RV dealer's bank. The transaction had gone through. Uh, Randall had proof of ownership of the RV um, and all that good stuff. The um, USAA, his bank, contacted the RV dealer's bank, which I believe is a small bank in Tennessee whose name I can't recall, and uh, they said, hey, we need to reverse that wire transfer we just did because uh, that wasn't legitimate or whatever their excuse was. Well, um, this is when Randall got on the phone with Heather. Heather, Heather uh, Ann is a Heather Ann Turk Giraffe, uh, also known uh, as H-A-T-J in short for people. Um, she is a former prosecutor. She's an attorney by education. She also has a um, bachelor's in accounting and finance. And uh, she also has a JD. And she was a prosecuting attorney for some years, member of the bar. And um, then she became a banking compliance officer. And I wow. think through all those experiences, it revealed to her uh, the absolute fraud that our judicial, financial, and other systems are. Yep. And... Um, 
I'm going to explain my what my understanding of the collateral accounts or TDA accounts that each and every one of us has in our names, actually. Uh, what I believe their purpose is and how how they come to be, etc. Well, when we're born, uh, these accounts are apparently established and they're based upon uh, what these banksters uh, consider to be our economic value to the economy. And I'm sure there's lots of different variables that go into calculating that. But it's typically going to be in the millions, if not billions of dollars for some people. And um, these collateral accounts are established in those amounts, I think, based on that projection of your economic worth. And uh, that is collateral. The reason I call those collateral accounts that the Federal Reserve, the banksters can use to print and lend money out based on your economic value. In other words, in a fiat currency system that we're currently in, uh, that doesn't. That means we don't have any gold or any tangible asset backing that, uh, backing that currency. They are actually. We are now their gold. We become their gold, and that's what those collateral accounts represent. Kind of the backing of that money, which makes a lot of sense to me because really, in an economy, uh, its workers are you know the, really what what I think accumulative determine the value of that economy. You know, along with. Uh, uh, production and that sort of thing. But without the people, you've got no GDP, you know. So uh, the banksters use these uh, collateral accounts as, I guess, legitimizing their use of fiat currency and um, lending based on those collateral accounts. And then, of course, they charge us interest on the money that they lend that kind of comes out of thin air. So here we are. We're the collateral. We're the value as human beings, as, as, as human beings that can use our creative energy to create things, we're the value that uh, gives them the ability to create this money, and then they charge us interest for it. Well, that that's absolutely really kind of ludicrous if you think about it. And uh, we, it is perfect. What what my understanding is, what Randall Bean did is perfectly legal. Right. It is an account in his name with his number. Yet they don't want everyone to know about these, obviously, right. because I think. Uh, you know, obviously, they like to hoard wealth. They like to keep us running in the rat's wheel daily, yeah. uh, so they can control us and have us live, live, you know, paycheck to paycheck. So they, of course, don't want us accessing this money. It probably also, as we were, would deplete our accounts to pay debt or whatever, to buy an RV, whatever you want to do with those those. It's birthright money, is the way I see it. Right. Um, when 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 we deplete those accounts and use them in the way in which we want to use them, that reduces, I think, the central bank's ability to print and loan money out at interest, and they, of course, don't want to limit that. So um, Randall was picked up by federal agents. Uh, Heather, well, excuse me, let me back up. Heather got on the phone with USAA when they called uh, um, the RV Dealers Bank, and she got directly involved in trying to explain to them how the bank, the USAA, was actually trying to perpetrate fraud, not Randall Bean. Randall Bean was act rightfully accessing his collateral account. And um, then later on, and this is part of the charges against Heather Ann, um, well, let me back up. Randall was arrested by federal FBI agents. Um, the charges were, then the indictments were, something along the lines of five or six counts of bank fraud, five or six counts of uh, wire fraud, and like six or seven counts of conspiracy to commit money laundering, which uh, we kind of find funny because uh, usually mo money laundering is associated with drug dealing and right. uh, you know raising money by selling contraband, that sort of thing. This money came from the Federal Reserve, so why, why would you have to launder money from a Federal Reserve? So well, those they, charges are absolutely right. Wrong. They could just right make that up. <laughs> yeah, well, they had they wanted to charge them with something because they're trying to make an example of them to scare other people away. Uh, they also charged Heather because of her involvement and advice that she was giving Randall in this process uh, uh, with uh, one count of conspiracy to, uh, to commit uh, money laundering. So um, those are the charges against her. They, the interesting, the, the, there's a lot of really fishy stuff with this case, Cat. A lot that I can't, I can't even go into all of it in half an hour. I've been, re I've been uh, reporting on this in detail, and people can, if they're interested, go to my YouTube channel, Periscope, which is always the Light Reports. YouTube is the LightReports.com. Periscope is the Light Reports. Twitter is the Light Reports, and that's L I G H T R E P O R T S. The Light Reports, and. Uh, look at the reporting that I did from the various hearings from the courtroom, all kinds of legal shenanigans going on here. And the reason is, the banksters, 
also that I also refer to as Luciferian pedophiles, yep. are in a rock and a hard place right now. They know that Heather, uh, through her legal expertise and, and true understanding of the law, including the Uniform Commercial Code, can go into court and argue her own, own case and reveal the fraud that the banksters have been perpetrating against us. But at the same time, they're trying to make an example so everybody doesn't go and access their collateral accounts. And um, so they're really in this rock and a hard place. I, I think they're doing nothing but buying themselves time by not just dismissing these charges against Randall and Heather because I think the last thing they actually want to do is have Heather go through this uh, the trial process and reveal their, their fraud, which she will be able to do concretely beyond the shadow of a doubt. And um, so that's where we are right now. Heather was arrested in Washington, D.C. on, I believe, the 26th of July. Randall had been uh, arrested earlier in July, maybe around the 6th or so, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the interesting thing was that the federal authorities, the indictment came down for Heather Ann on July 19, and she was still in Tennessee at that time. So if you had an indictment to arrest her that would allow her to be arrested, why wouldn't they arrest her in Tennessee? Instead, they allowed her to travel to Washington, D.C. on like July 25th. And I think the reason they did that was in order, once again, to buy themselves more time yeah. because then we have to go through an extradition process, yeah. um, which happened to also include an identity hearing because Heather refused to acknowledge the jurisdiction of this court. Be yes. Because the judicial system, uh, our, our modern judicial system, folks, is based on yeah. admiralty maritime law. It absolutely has no jurisdiction over us as organic beings, yeah. uh, beings of this uh, American land and soil. And they absolutely know that. And by Heather, when we sign documents, we uh, unknowingly acknowledge that jurisdiction. When you sign a speeding ticket, even though they're, they're saying, oh, you're not pleading guilty, Put without prejudice, or um, what's the UCC one one dash three oh eight, and what, or or you can just write without prejudice next to your signature. And what that does is it gives them the little signature, but it does not acknowledge their jurisdiction over you. And so Heather, in the entire arrest process, in the booking, and everything else, she refused to sign their documentation granting jurisdiction to the court. And the court knows good and darn well yeah. that they do not have legitimate jurisdiction over her yeah. unless they grant it. So they're unlawfully detaining and arresting her. Yeah. And there's actually severe civil penalties that all those involved in that um, have, have exposed themselves to in this process. So they are then forced to have an identity hearing uh, because, you know, they're trying to extradite this person that is named, you know, Heather Ann uh, Turk-Giroff to Tennessee. But she hasn't admitted that she's that person, so they have to have a hearing to to try to prove that she's that person. And uh, I was there and present for that hearing in the Federal District Courthouse at 333 Constitution Avenue in Washington, D.C., and, and uh, it was an absolute, it was unbelievable uh, what we saw took place in the courtroom. Heather made it very clear to the judge, to the magistrate, that she uh, wanted to fire her counsel, or her counsel made it clear that she wanted to fire her counsel and that she was okay with having standby counsel, but not the current counselor she had, the current court-appointed counselor. She wanted a different one, and she was going to represent herself in this case. And in doing so, in representing herself, uh, the court knew that that was going to be the start of the process of revealing that they actually did not have jurisdiction over her, right. and she was going to prove that through UCC uh, law and filings. And so basically the judge just had an absolute, complete disregard for her constitutional rights to defend herself, yeah. to fire her counselor, really completely ignored those things, yeah. and uh, moved on oh with God. the proceedings as her um, court-appointed attorney, his name was Boss, uh, as her counselor. Now, this actually was so unusual that it blew his mind. Later on, he told her that he had never seen anything like that. Who this said this? Who, older, who said that? Her counselor? The, uh, her counsel, okay. her court-appointed counsel. Exactly. He, and he even pointed out in the courtroom that this is a clear, you know, she has constitutional rights to do this, to fire me and to represent herself. Judge didn't care because no matter what, they didn't want her to get up there Absolutely. and start telling. Because she's... 
she is an extremely intelligent, extremely yeah. well informed person in the in the UCC uh, Uniform Commercial Code, as well as all the filings that have basically foreclosed upon uh, what is a corporation. These judicial, yeah. these are for profit corporations, believe it or not, folks. Just talk. Can you talk just a little bit about you know your interview with Titus and how on the birth certificate, uh, you know, like the the, the system makes us. Yes. Um, yeah. and, you know. I mean, we're, we're just looting. we're here to pay the debt. I mean, that's yeah. that's the idea. See, when you're born, folks, if you go and look at your birth certificate, if you go and look at any legal documents you have, anything from the courts, most of your bills that come from corporations, the government is a corporate entity, the courts are a corporate entity, they're for-profit corporations, and they cannot legally engage you as a living flesh human being. So what they do at our birth, with the birth certificate, which is in all capital letters, whenever you see all capital letters, that, that represents, uh, unbeknownst to most people, their corporate straw man, the corporate entity that these other, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> Government that these uh, corporations, whether it be government corporations or or judicial corporations, they can engage that corporate entity. And most people don't even know this corporate entity has been has been um, you know created and basically is being manipulated and used to control them. And there is a process also uh, that some have gone through, including myself, where you can basically redeem uh, this straw man corporate entity and say, "Hey, look, this is my entity. I control it now." And, uh, you know, a lot of times courts don't recognize, they want to kind of just ignore this, this whole reality in law that if, if you, you know, assert that, no, I am not here in court uh, as this corporate entity, I'm here as a living human being, and you do not have jurisdiction over any living human beings, you can only interact and engage corporations, um, technically, by law, they are. They should stop any and all proceedings at that point and say, "Yes, you're right. We do not have jurisdiction over you as a yeah. living human being in the flesh." I hope that's a good enough synopsis of that. Right. So, I mean, basically, you know, our you know sovereignty and our inalienable rights that come from our Creator. That's what I mean. They are trying to kind of do away with and and have people um, right, like not be able to engage and exercise those rights and because I mean you know so many people really have just completely given over and 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 you know submitted themselves and and, and just tr you know blindly trusted and bow to this completely criminal system they you know they they don't expect I mean at this I mean at this late stage of the game I mean it is like really clear that this country is so criminal and so corrupt. I mean, I well, mean... It is, it is, it's because it's all a corporation. It's a corporate entity. The U.S. government is not a government. It's not a legitimate organic government. Right. That government was dissolved in 1871 and the reason being is the United States uh, was broke after World, uh, excuse me, the Civil War and the European banksters came in and the terms of their deal was that you will be incorporated, uh, that this will be a government services for-profit corporation, that uh, the owners are going to be, as I understand it, the British Crown, the European Banksters, and the Vatican. And uh, yeah. a lot of the profits from this for-profit uh, corporation uh, go to those entities. So they have actually owned us since then, because unfortunately the Congress sold us down the road. And with the you know, D.C. Act and the establishment of the District of Columbia, that is the only, if you even want, I don't even consider it legitimate, because they stole organic American land when they did this. But that is the only, what, 10 square miles where the, the corporate government that poses as the legitimate government of the United States has any jurisdiction whatsoever. And that may have been one of their motives uh, for allowing her to come to d the District of Columbia is they feel like, oh, well, maybe we do have kind of some legitimate jurisdiction here. But they actually don't because she's not acknowledging that jurisdiction and she's an organic being, an, a, an American of what, you know, citizen or not citizen, but person of whatever state, you know, she comes from. And uh, they absolutely have no, they don't, they have no legitimate jurisdiction over people in the, in the continental U.S. and the 50 states of the United States. Exactly. And it's, it's all admiralty law. Right. Let me just say a little bit about that. 
and how Admiralty Law got started, folks, was is, is, is you know the, the British used to the, the uh, sun never set on the British Empire two three hundred years ago, and they were all over the place doing commerce and Admiralty Law uh, is essentially when the captain of the ship. You know, you hear that the, the captain is the judge. This is done on the deck of the ship. The, the commerce disputes are settled on the deck of the ship. And the officers of the court were uh, the two officers of the ship who represented, you know, represented the plaintiff and the defendant in uh, resolving commerce issues around the seven, you know, the, the seven seas of the world of the uh, British Empire. But, of course, they have no jurisdiction on the organic soil, you know, of the United States. And so, I mean, in other so, words, like, I mean, this, I mean, this has been going on for, I mean, like since eighteen seventy one at least, yes, it, right. And um, so there's this. I asked Titus Frost. He said the um, the banks like put this money in there, and it, you know, it. I mean, it is ours. Yes. And it so, is. so right now. Um, she is still being held, right, Heather Ann? She is. And it's funny because, again, they're buying time. They moved her from the D.C. jail to the uh, a jail, a regional facility in Warsaw, Virginia, which is away from Tennessee. It's heading in the opposite direction of Tennessee. They then, uh, she spent a few days there. They then transferred her to Oklahoma City, which is apparently like a transfer facility. And then she's apparently, uh, she may right now be in Tennessee now, but it just seems like, why would you do all that? That's kind of silly when you're going from Virginia to a bordering state of Tennessee. And then the answer to that question, I'm convinced, is that they're just buying time because they have no idea what to do. They don't want people to access these accounts. They don't want this to go to trial with Heather representing herself and uh, completely revealing the entire fraud. And they don't want to just uh, dismiss things. Because they know that everybody's then going to access their uh, their collateral accounts. And so people ha people have actually done it su successfully, and some people have not done it successfully. Yeah, as I understand it, some folks have been able to, you know, uh, pay bills, etc. With I mean, Randall Bean was obviously successful in what he did. Uh, some other people have been able to pay bills uh, and debt with uh, using their collateral account routing numbers, social security numbers, and. Um, uh, some of those, a lot of those charges, they have started reversing manually because automatically the system allows them because they are legitimate. But uh, they have been doing reversals on some of those that come back two or three days later and says, say, you know, this process has been reversed, which as I understand it is against their own uh, wire um, banking wire rules, ACH, uh, Fed wire rules say once a wire transfer goes through from the Fed, it's permanent. But apparently that's not the case when their their fraud is being revealed and people are trying to access their funds. So it's going to be um, there's a, somebody just said and I haven't verified this. There's going to be a uh, some sort of hearing on the 29th of August for Randall. I think that's a Friday, and I don't know that we have any set uh, date for uh, Heather's uh, hearing, whatever that may be, whatever kind. It's just the whole thing is just screwy, like they're. They're saying documents that were filed by her team and her defense are not showing up. They actually, in the transcript, which I was there from the ID hearing, they left out things. They intentionally omitted things from the court transcripts because it was court of record. So they are just playing all kinds of funny games right in our face because they're scared to death of what's going on right now. And so, okay, so right now there is a... An account hooked up to my uh, credit union that I can just. Well, uh, as, as I understand it, I, I you know I haven't done this myself. I'm I'm waiting for things to shake out because I'm waiting for them to dismiss this case, and then uh, that's when you know I'll be more concerned with that. But uh, that and, and there's still some debate, and there may be multiple ways in which you can access multiple accounts. And uh, have money. You can yes, you should be able to have money transferred directly to your bank account, which is what Randall did to his USAA account from the Federal Reserve. I also have reason to believe there may be other entities like a public debt trust uh, that's within U.S. Treasury, um, and, and some people have had successes with some other things. So I don't necessarily think it's just the Federal Reserve. Uh, 
and I'm just kind of waiting for things to shake out before I put too much emphasis on any of that, you know, and giving people, because I think people ought to just wait right now and sit tight until this case is dismissed, which I think is inevitable. Either it's dismissed or Heather's going to go in there and rip it up, shred the system, and show everybody what it's really, truly all about. I mean, is there anyone that can help her? I mean, there's got to be, like, other people, lawyers, you know. Uh... She's, got a whole, she's got a whole team. She's got a whole yeah. team and a whole lot of people behind her yeah. on energetic levels, on legal assistance levels. There are lots of people assisting Heather. But as far as legal advice, um, she's beyond competent in, in doing that for herself. She needs people to do things like... You know, hey, pull up this document for me and file it with the courthouse. You know, send me some funds so I can make phone calls. You know, it's a, it's a real racket. Like, you got to have money even to make phone calls in prison, and that's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's... All, now, one of her team members speculated to me that, as I said, I think it's all, they're moving her, doing this shuffle around from Virginia to Tennessee through every other state and town. Uh, he, he asserted that you know the, the profit the prison system is also for profit, yeah. and he asserted that that was a revenue uh, maneuver. You know, as a way to generate revenue. Um, I don't know um, if you can maybe come back next Wednesday and we can. I mean, continue on because it does sound like there's a lot more to talk about, and um, I have like more guests tonight than I can even fit in. Sure, sure. But um, yeah, I gotta get you know busy calling the next guest who's gonna talk about the misconceptions of the Confederacy. I got you. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is like, I, I mean, these people are just in your face criminal, exactly like strip. It really, it really but, is. I mean, I you know again, I won't get started, but um, thank you, Neil. Well, let, me, let me just share with people because I know we gotta wrap it up. It is seven thirty. Let me just share with people, uh, again, if you came in a little late, please check out Titus Frost's YouTube channel. I think that video has 20-something thousand views now, uh, where we did a great video on admiralty law so you can kind of understand the backstory behind all of this and why these courts don't legitimately have jurisdiction over us. Yeah. Uh, also, if you want to follow updates on it, um, you can go to my Twitter, which is The Light Reports. Uh, my YouTube channel, which is thelightreports.com, no spaces in any of this, guys. And also, uh, you could go to Periscope and sign up for, uh, that's the quickest way to get it, because then I usually Periscope then put it on YouTube, uh, any updates I have. And her team uh, kind of feeds me information. As this all transfers to Knoxville, I don't believe I'll be going down there uh, due to other, unfortunately, due to other commitments. But we are looking for somebody to continue that coverage, and her team will be on the ground in Knoxville as well. Um, and I'll, you know, we'll, we'll, I will keep people updated. If you're following me on the light reports, uh, I'll keep people updated as to who's going to kind of pick up the ball on covering this on the ground in Tennessee. Thank you, Neil Wolf, the Light Reports. All right. Okay. Thanks, Kat. Have, Have a, a good evening. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye.